So the state of California's request for an emergency stay in its assault weapons ban case, Miller v. Bonta, is now being challenged not just by the plaintiffs, but also by 22 other states. So let's talk about this. But real quick, before we jump into this video, if you think that California's assault weapons ban violates Second Amendment rights, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to give a shout out to one of the main sponsors of the channel, that is Tac Pack. So today I actually got the June Tac Pack and it came with a ton of things like Ear Pro, um, some fire starter kits, and then also something useful for if Miller v. Bonta goes our way. It is a pistol grip. So check out Tac Packs and there will be a link in the description box to them. So if you're not aware, Miller v. Bonta is the California assault weapons ban case that got a lot of news very recently. A judgment came down from Judge Benitez in the Southern District of California that found that California's ban on so-called assault weapons was indeed unconstitutional. That is now being appealed up to the Ninth Circuit, which is the next level. Now in this interim of the it being appealed to the Ninth Circuit, one of the things that the district court judge, Judge Benitez, did is that he put a 30-day stay on his own order to end on July 4th. And the importance of this is that if the state of California does not get a stay before July 4th, his decision goes into effect and residents in the state of California can finally exercise their Second Amendment rights and purchase those traditional rifles that all kinds of other states are able to purchase. So the state of California has been frantic to try to get an emergency stay from the Ninth Circuit. And the Ninth Circuit actually set a briefing schedule, um, kind of an expedited briefing schedule on that emergency motion that the state filed. So plaintiffs in this case who are fighting for Second Amendment rights of California residents had to file their opposition to the state's motion by June 15th, which they have filed that. And then the state of California could file an optional reply by June 16th at nine o'clock, which they did. And then also in response to all of this, 22 other states filed an opposition to the state's motion and actually supporting that they should not be granted this emergency motion and that what the state of California is doing is indeed violating Second Amendment rights. So first, a quick rundown of what the plaintiffs filed in their opposition. And so this all revolves around the standard review for whether or not a, a state pending appeal should be granted. And it's four parts. And it's whether or not the state of California in their motion showed whether they have made a strong showing that they are likely to succeed on the merits. Two, whether they will be irreparably injured absent a stay. Three, whether the issuance of the state will substantially injure the other parties interested in the proceeding. And four, where the public interest lies. And for this standard review, the most important things are the first and second elements. And that is likelihood of success on the merits and then the irreparable harm. And that is the thing that you're gonna see argued primarily in both the opposition and the reply. And the plaintiffs argue here primarily they are likely to succeed on the merits because these types of rifles that are banned by the state of California and these firearms that are being banned are very common and in common use for lawful purposes. Over 19 million of these types of firearms that the state of California bans have been sold. And here in the plaintiff's opposition, they state that the state's ban would fail under Heller's test since a ban that amounts to a prohibition of an entire class of arms that is overwhelmingly chosen by American society for that lawful purpose cannot withstand constitutional scrutiny under any standard. So they're saying this categorical ban on constitutionally protected uh, firearms that are overwhelmingly chosen by Americans could not pass any level of test, any test at all, either the Heller or even the incorrect Ninth Circuit standard, which kind of does this interest balancing and even the use of intermediate scrutiny, this would fail as well. And then they go on to say that residents in the state of California will suffer an irreparable harm, primarily that irreparable harm being a violation of their constitutional rights, violation of their Second Amendment rights, and being able to purchase these types of firearms that many other states do permit, but for whatever reason, the state of California says that you cannot have. And ultimately, the state of California is saying that it will suffer some sort of irreparable harm if we are allowed to go and purchase these during this appeal process. But in their opposition, the plaintiffs said the only real harm that they will suffer is that they will have to join 44 other states that permit these types of purchases. That cannot be an irreparable harm like the state of California is alleging here. They're saying that if this is gonna be so bad, it's gonna harm the state of California, but there are 44 other states that have and continue to allow these types of firearms to be purchased. So now let's look at what the state of California said in their reply. And again, it's gonna come down to those two main points, a likelihood of success on the merits and then irreparable harm that they are saying that they are going to suffer 
if this stay is not granted. So the main overview of what the state of California is arguing in their reply is that stays of this type have been granted by the Ninth Circuit in the past. For example, in cases like Rody, which dealt with the ammunition background eligibility check, uh, stuff that went on and has made its way to the Ninth Circuit. Also the Sylvester case, which dealt with the California 10 day waiting period. They said a stay was granted in that case as well. And even in the Duncan case, which dealt with magazine capacity restrictions. And there they're saying Judge Benitez himself, the same judge issued a stay on his own and so they're saying because of this a stay should be granted as well in this case Miller v. Bonta. And then the other main point that they push for heavily is that there are other circuit courts out there that have also found that bans of this nature are indeed constitutional. But the state of California here is still saying that because other circuit courts did indeed find that bans of this nature are constitutional, this circuit court here should also grant the emergency stay and that they are likely to succeed on the merits because other circuit courts have found these types of bans constitutional. And the last one is that irreparable harm. And this is something that the state of California has recycled and they stated um, actually in the lower court and now they're using once again, it's going to be that these types of weapons um, if they're allowed in the state of California, it's going to lead to more injuries. It's going to lead to more mass shootings. And it's in the interest of public safety to not allow these types of firearms to be purchased. And one of the things they also noted here was the whole Duncan issue that when Judge Benitez actually issued his order in Duncan, that allowed for millions of magazines to be purchased in the state of California. And they're saying that they don't want the same thing to happen here because if it is, that's going to cause them to suffer irreparable harm. And that takes us directly into the opposition that 20 22 states filed against the state of California seeking an emergency stay here in this case, Miller v. Bonta. These 22 states that are opposing what the state of California is seeking in the emergency stay include Arizona, Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, Georgia, Idaho, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, West Virginia, and Wyoming. All these states are saying that the state of California should not be granted an emergency stay because they are infringing on their residents' Second Amendment rights. And from the perspective of these own states, they say that the interest that the state of California is putting forward is not legitimate at all because in their own states, they don't do these things. They allow these types of firearms to be purchased and nowhere near what the state of California is alleging happens in their state. They also state in their opposition to the state of California's emergency stay, that what the state of California does in their ban fails under the Heller test and would fail even under the incorrect Ninth Circuit two-prong test and this tiered scrutiny and would fail even under that lower level of intermediate scrutiny. So they kind of say a lot of the things that plaintiffs say as well but they come from the perspective of these are attorney generals of various other states. These are other states that are saying what the state of California is doing is not valid because in their own states, they have these laws on the books that allow for people to actually purchase firearms that do not infringe on their residents' constitutional rights, uphold their residents' constitutional rights. And what the state of California is so afraid of here in which they state they will suffer so much irreparable harm does not happen in their own state. Now, one of the questions I'm sure I'm gonna get from here is, what happens now? Well, like I said in the beginning, the courts here in the Ninth Circuit actually set this kind of at an expedited briefing schedule. They set it for June 15th and 16th for these briefs to be filed, the opposition and the reply, and now those are submitted. One of those reasons is because the state of California said that they needed the Ninth Circuit to review this emergency stay by June 18th. Now, the reason they wanted this reviewed by June 18th is the state of California said, if we lose, we want time to be able to appeal up to the en banc panel in the Ninth Circuit or even up to the Supreme Court because we want to try to get a stay before July 4th because if the state of California does not get a stay by July 4th, then Judge Benitez's own temporary stay will terminate and his order will go into effect, which will then allow residents in the state of California to finally be able to purchase, manufacture, import, um, buy, sale, transfer, all of that, these types of firearms that 44 other states are actually able to have as well. So because of that, you can see why the state of California is very much trying to get a stay before July 4th because they know if they don't, this is going to be the best 4th of July ever in the state of California. So hopefully that helped catch you guys up with the case Miller v. Bonta and where we stand right now. And like I said, the state of California wanted the Ninth Circuit to review this by June 18th so that they would have time to appeal. So I would expect 
Pretty soon here, we would also get a determination by the Ninth Circuit if they are indeed going to review this by June 18th. But if I get any more information like that, I will definitely let you guys know. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you guys like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure that notification bell because it helps the channel analytics Help to spread the word about the Second Amendment. Help spread the word about 2A news like this that is going on in the state of California and nationwide. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never get this nation was built by armed scholars. It's nationally maintained by armed scholars.